Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, we are going to be discussing the unit circle. We're going to talk about what it means, where it comes from, what all these numbers around the edge mean, what all these angles mean, how this is constructed, and what it means to you. The only thing we're not going to, not going to be talking about are these numbers right here. These are the same. Pi over 2 is the same thing. It's 90 degrees. It's an angle measured in a different unit of measure that we'll talk about in a future episode. So we're going to be talking about where this comes from, what it means for trigonometry, why you really need to understand it, and how it can help you. You might want to grab a calculator because you're going to be do some, doing some quick verification as we work, work through the video. It's a rather long video. There's lots to get through, but it's really important that you understand all of this. Now, there are shortcuts to help you construct a unit circle and come up with all of these numbers, and I'll get to that in a future video. But I think it's really, really important to understand what this means, where it comes from, because that's your foundation of your understanding. Shortcuts just help you get answers. They may help you reconstruct the understanding, but the understanding is what's most important. All right, off my soapbox now, let's get started, right? We're going to start with a Cartesian coordinate plane. We've got an x-axis that's horizontal, y-axis that's vertical, where they cross is the origin. We're going to make the origin the center of a circle, and a circle has a radius of 1, okay? So that makes all of these intersection points between the circle and the axes coordinates that we can find. So if we have a radius of 1, that means anywhere on the edge of the circle, the distance from the origin is 1, because what a circle is is an infinite collection of points, all equal distance from one center point. So right here, the coordinate or the distance right here from the origin is 1, just like anywhere else. So here, the vertical distance is 0, but the horizontal distance is 1. Here, this coordinate is 0, 1, because the vertical distance is 1, but the horizontal distance is 0. And so that's how we get all of these same, all, that's how we get all of these coordinates. This is negative 1, 0, because it's to the left, and this is 0, negative 1, because it's down. So in the y direction, that's negative 1. The x didn't move at all. Now, for the unit circle, we start here at 1, 0. We start at the origin, and we do a rotation counterclockwise. Now, a measure of rotation is what an angle is. An angle measures rotation, and the unit circle is all about various rotations shown on one diagram. So we start at the origin, we rotate counterclockwise, we start here going counterclockwise. So let's say we rotated this far, and let's say that that was a 45 degree rotation. What we're going to end up doing at first is we're going to find where what this coordinate is right here. So if we started this point and we rotated counterclockwise 40 five degrees, what would the coordinate be right there? After we figure out how to figure out those coordinates, then I'll help you understand what those coordinates mean, what they have to do with trig. So 45 degree rotation, the x coordinate is going to be the horizontal distance. That's going to be the x coordinate. It's the same as the one down here. I'm going to move it down here because we're going to actually draw a right triangle. And the vertical distance is y. So if I can figure out this x distance and this y distance, then I know my coordinate, x comma y. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw an, a right triangle. I'm going to go ahead and drop a line down. That's a 90 degrees with the x-axis. And what I have is a 45-45 isosceles right triangle. Now, the thing we know about 45 degree right triangles is that whatever the hypotenuse is, the legs are that value times the square root of 2 over 2. Now, if you're a little shaky on the special right triangles, I'll put a link in the description. You need to get 100% rock solid. Otherwise, this unit circle stuff, going to be really confusing. And if this is confusing, then all the trig that follows is going to be a little iffy and a little shaky. You're going to have a hard time. So they're not that difficult. Give yourself a little patience and go back and, and study those special right triangles. All right, let's get on with this now, right? So because I know that the x distance from the center to here, or the center to here, the, the horizontal distance is the square root of 2 over 2. That makes the x coordinate square root of 2 over 2. And the y distance, the vertical, the vertical distance is the square root of 2 over 2 as well. So my coordinate right here after a 45 degree rotation is the square root of 2 over 2 for x, square root of 2 over 2 for y. Let's take a look at another angle that's now in the second quadrant. So let's say we rotated all the way around. Remember, we start here, go counterclockwise. Let's say we did a rotation of 150 degrees. Oh, now that's a little confusing because all of the trick we have done has involved only acute angles that are in a right triangle. So now all of a sudden we have an angle that is obtuse. Definitely doesn't fit in a right triangle. But what we end up doing in order to find this coordinate is we end up 
coming up with this thing that's called a reference angle. Now what a reference angle is, is it's an angle that's somewhere around the origin and it uses one of the one of the axes as one side. And so we can use a 30 degree angle here because 180 plus or 180 is 30 plus 50 and this if we went all the way around that's 180 degrees. So this is perfectly valid. I could rotate all the way around here to find that coordinate or I could use what's remaining a 30 60 90 right triangle. Now if you remember a 30 60 right triangle whatever the hypotenuse is hypotenuse here is one because it's the radius of a circle and the radius of that circle is one the short leg which is opposite of the 30 degree angle is one half the long leg which is opposite of the 60 degree angle is the square root of three over two times the hypotenuse so times one we don't need to write times one right that gives us the coordinate right here of negative root three over two and one half the reason that the x is negative is because we are going left, and left is the negative direction for x. Good so far? Now, let's look at a 30 degree angle. 30 degree angle, that's going to end up in the first quadrant. Do you see how these coordinates are almost the same? The only thing that's different is that the x is positive, and the y is both are positive because they're in the first and second quadrants, and they have exactly the same height. And so there's a pattern there that we're going to see very, very clearly in a little bit, but this is where it comes from. So I just want to kind of extract that from all of the information and kind of piece this together. So now let's take a, let's zoom in on our 30, 60, 90 right triangle right here. So here's what we got. We got a 30, a 60, and a 90. And the opposite of the 30 is one half. The hypotenuse is one. And the long side is the square root of three over two. So the sine of 30 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So opposite is one half, hypotenuse is one, one half divided by one is just one half. So the sine of 30 degrees is one half. And if you look, you'll notice that the y coordinate for 30 degree rotation, the y coordinate is one half. Let's see if that works for cosine as well. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that gives us the adjacent side is the square root of three over two. Divided by one is just, of course, square root of three over two. And look, right there, there's cosine. So what we have on a unit circle, the reason that all of those points are so important is because cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate. So, for example, here at 90 degrees, and you can try this on a calculator, if you do the cosine of 90 degrees, you get zero. If you do the sine of 90 degrees, you get one. Let's talk about tangent, though. Now, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, if I look at this triangle right here, opposite is one half and adjacent is the square root of three over two. If I simplify this, I have to multiply by the reciprocal and I end up with those twos reducing. I end up with one over the square root of three. And that's a problem because we don't like to do arithmetic with irrational denominators. So we rationalize the denominator, multiply the square root of three over three. That equals one. It just changes the way it looks. Square root of three times the square root of three. The square root of three is three. One times the square root of three just square root of three. So the tangent of 30 degrees is the square root of three divided by three. And what that ends up being though, if you look, this opposite, the opposite of 30 is one half and that's the sine. The adjacent of the 30, square root of three over two, that's cosine. So tangent turns out to be sine divided by cosine. Let's take a look and see why that's true, because this is a really big deal right here. So tangents opposite over adjacent. We know what sine and cosine are. So let's see if sine divided by cosine really does reduce to opposite over adjacent. So we're just going to go ahead and plug in our values. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. We're going to have to divide, which is multiplication by the reciprocal. We reduce. And what we end up with is opposite over adjacent. So tangent is sine over cosine. All right, let's put this all together now, see if we can make sense of the whole thing, all right? Now, this is a blank unit circle. It's on a Cartesian coordinate plane. The coordinate here is zero, zero, but the zero, zero really doesn't have much of anything to do with trigonometry. But all of these coordinates come from rotations, and all of these coordinates are cosine for x and sine for y. So now let's see if we can figure out what all these coordinates are, where they come from, where the, what the rotations are. So the first one's 30 degrees. And we know that cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that that's 1 half. And cosine is adjacent, square root of 3 over 2. If we take that same triangle and we 
make it a reference angle in the second quadrant, we end up with almost the same exact coordinate, except because it's in the second quadrant, the x is negative. So the the cosine of 150 degrees, because this would be 150 degree rotation to get to this point from here, it's 150 degree rotation, we end up with a cosine of 150 being negative root 3 over 2, and the sine of 150 being 1 half. Let's take a look at a, tri a reference angle of 30 degrees that's in the third quadrant. This would be 210 degrees. And because the opposite of 30 is 1 half, that's a y distance, negative 1 half. So the sine of 210 is negative 0.5. And the cosine of 210 is going to be negative 0 0.866. That's the three decimal approximation of the square root of 3 divided by 2. Let's take a look at a 60 degree angle, just so we can see how that looks. Now when we have a 60 degree angle, what we end up with is the opposite of 60 degrees is the long side, that's square root of 3 over 2. That's why the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, or 0 0.866, and the cosine is 1 half, or of course 0.5. Now, what we have, we have a 30 degree angle in the first quadrant, 45 and a 60. We talked about the 45 briefly at the very beginning. I just want to make sure we're 100% sure that we understand why the coordinate is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2, which does make the cosine of 45 degrees square root of 2 over 2, that's 0 0.707, and the sine is the same, and tangent, tangent's great, tangent's 1. The reason that is, is because whatever the hypotenuse of a 45-45 of a right triangle is, the legs are that value of the hypotenuse times square root of 2 over 2, and the reason that our hypotenuse is 1 is because the hypotenuse is the radius of this circle, and the radius of this circle is 1. So any point on this circle to the center has a distance of 1. There you go. Now, we have that 45 degree triangle in the first quadrant. We could also make that 45 degree triangle a reference angle in the third quadrant. So 180 plus another 45 degrees, well that's 225 degrees, and that 225 degree angle is going to have a cosine of negative root 2 over 2 and the sine exactly the same value. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at these other values like this 90 and we have a 270 and a 180 and a 360. Now don't forget this is people often get all of these correct in all of the other iterations but they sometimes miss the 0 and the 360, 90, 180 and 270. Remember this is a coordinate plane and the circle has a radius of 1. So the distance from the origin to here is a distance of 1. And it's all in the y direction, so the coordinate here is 0, 1. The coordinate here at 180 is negative 1, 0. The coordinate here at negative at 270 is 0, negative 1. So the cosine of, z of 270 is 0, sine of 270, negative 1. Don't, don't forget that. Sometimes the easy stuff's the e easiest thing to forget. Now all of the angles as you go around, they're just, they're just, <laughs> now, all of the angles as you go around, they're just copies of reference angles of either 30 or 45 or 60 degrees. And so if you can kind of learn how the pattern works, it's really easy to remember how all of these angles on the unit circle or where they come from. Now, let's see if we can use this easy information to come up with what the coordinates are down here in this in this fourth quadrant. Now, you see from here, the origin to this x distance is going to be one half at both 300 degrees and at 60 degrees. So one half is the x. Now, because we have a 60 degree reference angle right here, the opposite side is going to be square root of 3 over 2, but because it is below the x-axis, that's the negative direction for y, it's going to be negative root 3 over 2. So for 300 degrees, cosine is 1 half, uh, cosine is 1 half, and sine is negative root 3 over 2. Now we could take this same way, the same distance of 1 half, and we could go the other direction. And so this 240 degrees is going to have the same y, negative root 3 over 2, but the distance for x is now negative 1 half. And you can repeat that all the way through as you go through the unit circle until you come up with all of these coordinates. So I hope you know what all of these numbers mean, what, where do they all come from, and what they all have to do with trig. 
You see, a lot of trig you have to do without a calculator, and even if you could use a calculator, this really helps you understand how sine and cosine work, helps you to understand why the sine of 180 degrees is zero. It might help you to understand how tangent can be undefined or tangent can equal zero. It can also help you understand how to come up with some of these other values. So like the cosine of 225 degrees or the tangent of 225. Why is the tangent of 225 degrees one? Or perhaps the most important question, how is it if we start off with trigonometry and in a, in a right triangle and all the angles that are inputs are acute, how do we end up using trigonometry to find the value, the, the trig, the sine say, for example, of 420 degrees? 420 degrees would be a full 360 plus another 60. So the cosine of 420 degrees is going to be one half. That's why it works. It all comes from the unit circle. Really, really important. There are shortcuts. I'll share another video in the future that kind of helps you to figure out how to construct these numbers more quickly in case you are a little shaky or it's been some time and you forgot how those special triangles work. Anyway, it's a really, really powerful thing. It's very, very important to understand. It unlocks a lot of secrets in trig, makes it crystal clear and easy for you to, to remember how a lot of the trig works. So you need some practice. So I will put a link in the description below that you can access these problems on the internet. You can visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com. I'll put a link specifically for this information and all of the uh, information before this that helps make sense of what you've seen here. And then, of course, you will be able to access what comes next and have a good understanding of all the trig. If this has been a useful video, I would very much appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below if you have a question. If you like it, just to say, hey, whatever. Subscribe, share it. Hope it's been helpful. I hope you have a great day.